Well, listen, for you guys, <laughs> I was definitely going to make time. You're in Manchester, my hometown, yeah. and I'm so excited. No, well, we're, we're very, very pleased yeah. to be here, and a very good reception. Uh, what would you say about Mancunians in general? Straight speaking, warm, friendly? Warm. Honestly, I feel, obviously, being a fellow Manc, but I just think they are, they've got time, time for people, kind, yeah. warm, Loving. Love a fight, bitchy. I'm talking about your program <laughs> yeah. now. Uh, falling out all the time. Yeah, but that's not me. That's, Cheshire. <laughs> that's it. Well, that's anywhere, isn't it? Yeah. Let's face it. You get drama with women no matter where you are. I don't think you just have to be in Cheshire for that. So but... take us to the beginning of that journey because, yeah. you know, obviously you were already successful in your own right, absolutely killing it with your fashion label. Yeah. Did you get approached? I mean, how did they find the cast for the um, show? So I know a lot of the cast members. Um, obviously through the kids going to school together. So we were at a charity event and um, yeah, some of the production team from Monkey Kingdom were there. And to be honest, I didn't have a clue what The Real Housewives was. Um, some of the girls are fan, fans of the show, but I really didn't because I obviously work, I travel a lot, don't really get to watch too much TV. But it was an opportunity that I thought, Do you know what, I'm going to give this a go. But then you let cameras into your home where everybody yeah. else is home for the past six years. Any regrets? Um, no, honestly, because I'm just being me. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I feel the show has been an amazing platform for me as a female, um, a British Asian businesswoman. And I think it's been great for me to use it to highlight issues, real life issues, because I think people you know, have this perception, oh, they have an amazing life. No, I work really hard and I'm human. I just have normal problems as anyone else would. Um, so I've used it, I think, and I'm very grateful, um, you know, to the show because I've used it to my advantage yeah. to help others. Yeah. You know, I'm going through the menopause. I don't think women talk about it. Um, well, so. talk, talk to us about it, because I, I was reading that you, um, you you suddenly started experiencing all these menopause symptoms and you had no idea what they were, no. but you've, you've taken the radical action of having your ovaries removed. Yeah. Tell us about this whole journey. Well, I kept um, having these ovarian cysts and I've suffered for like two, three years, had a hysterectomy five years ago. I'm really going to bore you now with it. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm Believe really... me, no, no, no. Yeah. I'm, I'm surrounded by women and they all, you well, know, just everybody think it's... identifies. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's really important to talk about it because it can be really debilitating. You know, for me, I found... Do you I know went it's, in... funny, it's funny you yeah. said that, you know, being bored about it. But menopause affects men because it affects, if it affects you, exactly. it affects the men in your life. And from children to partners. Yeah, and I live in a household with men. You know, two mm -hmm. sons that don't guess it. They just thought mum was being a drama queen because I'm on reality TV. But I think it's been great for them to understand because we don't talk about it. And so what were your experiences then? Because people hear a lot about the low mood and, and the not being able to sleep and all of that. But yours was, was it worse than that with the, the yeah. cysts? Yeah, I think with the cysts, one, the pain. Um, two, obviously going into the early, you know, sort of perimenopausal now and full on men menopausal, just brain fog, you know, going into a business meeting where I can't remember things. Mm -hmm. You know, we're discussing designs where I'm talking like, I don't remember that design. And it's, it's really quite a dark place that you go yeah. into because everyone's looking at you as if to say, hang on a minute, you were in that meeting last week, why don't you remember? So, you know, but I don't want to say it's a negative thing because I think I've learned about it, I've learned how to deal with it. And it's not a disease or anything, it's yeah. just another yeah. stage in yeah. a woman's life, See, really. Man, I mean, you were talking about meetings and designs and your clothing brand and whatever. Yeah. Um, a lot of people may not know that Manchester, big in the rag trade, always has Huge. been. Huge. Yeah, I tell mean, people about that sort of history. I mean, I go back to when my father came to England back in, you know, the early 60s. And, you know, we, you know, just seeing how hard they worked, you know, glorified market trade or whatever you want to call it. But just to see, you know, the fashion industry and now obviously the world that we live in online is huge. And I'm saying, I'm telling you, it's all happening in Manchester. I feel like we are the capital of fashion now, not London. I feel like it all happens and, here. And is it fair to say there is quite a, um, a big sort of British Asian community in fashion as well? And that British Asian work ethic has yeah. really, you know, reaped benefits. Massively. Yeah. I mean, you know, some of the top clothing brands are probably ran by a lot of, you know, yeah. British Asians. But yeah, the work ethic, it's been instilled in us. I'm trying to do the same with 
you know, my boys, just to give them that hunger. You know, you, listen, not just the fashion industry, I think any industry, yeah. if you work hard, you achieve. Mm -hmm. And do you feel the pressure? Because I, I, I was yeah. looking on your website and I, yeah. I, I love all of your designs. Thank you. You do a lot of modelling for yourself and obviously yeah. being on reality TV, going through the menopause, yeah. I mean, you're naturally a stunningly beautiful woman, Thank but you. you will feel pressure, you know, just like anybody, I suppose. Yeah, I think, listen, social media has its benefits and at the same time, Time, it can be really pressurizing but I think I'm so comfortable now in my skin this is listen I'm no supermodel I'm five foot three um, but it is what it is and I think once you love who you are maybe that comes with age mm. you know this is it yeah. this is who I am. So. Seema what's coming in the next series I suppose you don't know of uh, housewives. What do uh, you or don't you? Do no, they you tell you this needs to happen? Not at all really? I honestly can tell you I'm just as shocked with some of the things that happen <laughs> And it is, it is real, it is reality, it's real. Um, I really don't know. I don't even know who's coming back as yet. So, but yeah. Do some, do some producers go in the ear of some of the cast members and encourage them to stir no. things up? Really? So no. people are naturally provocative. Naturally, in some honestly. <laughs> they, they're eight strong women, can yeah. you imagine? And um, everyone's, everyone wants to shine in their own right. There's none of that. It's literally, it's not, it's not staged at all. Final you. point. What's it like to live in the, in the Manchester area? How would you sum it up to people who just think, oh, that's up north, that is? Not at all. Listen, Manchester is famous for the music, for the fashion, football. Yeah. I mean, hello. <laughs> I'm a big Man United fan. You, I've got the best football teams here. Manchester's an amazing place. You know, the restaurant industry, everything yeah. is booming here at the moment. It really is. Yeah. So, for me, Manchester is the place. Seema, thank you it's for telling us all about thank the you. place. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> thank you for coming in and, and talking. It's been absolutely great yeah. to see you. Yeah.